What is up guys, my name is Pocketcraft and welcome to the Cobblemon Survival Guide. This is a brand new series where I'm going to teach you absolutely everything and anything you need to know about Cobblemon so you can get the best experience out of this game. Also, to make things more interesting, I'm going to do this in a Let's Play form and we'll play through a survival world and I'll have a set of goals of things that I'm trying to accomplish. My goals for this Let's Play are to catch every legendary Pokemon, catch six shiny Pokemon, have six starter Pokemon at level 100, catch every Vavilion form, and catch one mythical Pokemon. I encourage you to subscribe right now so you don't miss out on any of this because it's going to be great. Now the very first thing you want to do when you start your Cobblemon world is pick your starter. So you won't need to press the M key and it'll open up this section here where you can choose what starter Pokemon you want. All of the starter Pokemon are currently in Cobblemon and we can pick whichever one we want. Now I personally think fire starters are some of the harder ones to find naturally in the world. And I love Torchic, so I'm going to pick Torchic as my starter Pokemon. Now, if you want to use your Pokemon, you can send it out just by pressing the R button. And then you can interact with it if you click Shift and then right click on your Pokemon. You can give it an item, which I don't have any, so we can't do that. And some Pokemon you can also put on your shoulder. Now that you've chosen your starter Pokemon, if you click the M button, you can go to this little section here where you can see more about your Pokemon. You can check their moves and you can change them as they level up. You can check their stats, their IVs, their EVs, their base stats, as well as friendship. But now we're gonna talk a little bit about first day priorities in Cobblemon. We have a really cool starting spawn location here where we can hopefully find some rare Pokemon like Lapras. But the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is get Pokeballs. We also will want to do normal Minecraft things like breaking down trees for wood, and getting some a food source because I am playing in a survival world. So we'll be working on that. But the other thing that I want to make sure we do first is get Pokeballs. To get Pokeballs, you need to find an apricorn tree, which looks just like this. They have multiple colors. This one is a white apricorn tree. And then you right click on the apricorns and they drop an apricorn. And there's also a chance that it'll drop this, which is called an apricorn seed. You can use this to plant and grow another apricorn tree in the future. So that's going to be super useful as we start to set up our base here in the future. But we're going to harvest these because you'll need at least four apricorns as well as some copper to build your first set of pokeballs. Now you can form better pokeballs if you use iron and gold, which we'll do in the future. But for now, I just want to get a base set of pokeballs. So I'm going to go around and look for some iron as well as gather some of the basic first day resources. But I'm going to talk a little bit about why it's so important that you get Pokeballs right off the bat. We'll explain as we battle a Pokemon. So we're gonna battle this Pineco here. To battle a Pokemon, you go up to him and you press R with the Pokemon selected you wanna use. And then if you wanna run around, you can press R again and you can get a better angle here to see the fight. And then it's just normal fighting and we'll see if we win our first battle here. There we go, and Torchic has won his first battle. He'll gain some experience points and then we can start leveling up as we go through. Now I'm very adamant about getting Pokeballs early on because I once played through Cobblemon and I was just walking around for a little bit. I was exploring the world, didn't get Pokeballs yet and I came across a shiny Geodude. And by the time I actually got Pokeballs, I could not find the shiny more. He had despawned and I was super bummed about it. So you really wanna make sure that you get Pokeballs immediately so you don't have something like that happen to you. I haven't found copper yet, but I have found another color apricorn tree, which is awesome. Because at the end of the day, one of our goals to start off the world is we're going to want to try and get every color of apricorns. It'll take a moment to do that, and we're going to want to stay around here maybe to get more of these so we can get a seed. Because you can get different types of Pokeballs depending on the color you use. And so if we're going to get all of the Pokeballs, which is something that we will want to do at some point, we're going to need to make sure we get every color of apricorn. I also harvested some berries while I was off camera. And berries can be found on many different plants, but they will look kind of like this. And we'll go a lot more in depth with berries later on. But just know if you see anything like this, you'll want to right click it so you can harvest berries. These are orin berry trees. All right, after a few minutes of searching, we finally found ourselves some copper. And so we're gonna mine this up. I might look around for a little bit more, gather a few resources here. And then we're gonna craft our first Pokeballs and catch our first Pokemon. All right, so I think I've found an area where I want to settle down for a little bit. It's a nice open area which gives me a lot of room to build things. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do before we make Pokeballs is we're going to put down our apricorn seeds that we've gathered so that we can start a little bit of an apricorn orchard here to start having more materials to craft Pokeballs. So I'm going to plant these down just in this area right here. Now I'm going to show you how to build some basic Pokeballs. So the most basic Pokeballs will just be a normal color and it's four of whatever color apricorn around one copper ingot. 
And so we can do this with any of the colors of apricorns that we've gathered. I'm gonna do black just because that's one that I have a lot of seeds, apricorn seeds for, so I know I can replenish. And then we'll get a couple few, a few of a couple other colors as well, just to stock up. Now this is one ball that I actually like a lot. It's called the Safari Ball, and it just gives you a 1.5 times chance of catching them outside of battle. So that means you can just run around and throw it at Pokemon. So I like this a lot just because it allows for easy catching of some pretty weak Pokemon. And so I'm gonna grab that as well just to help us catch more Pokemon. Now we are pretty set and we have our map here and, and looking at it, there's a couple different Pokemon nearby. I think there's one in specific that I would like to try and catch and that is Pichu. And so we have Pichu right here. It's a level nine, so I think we should be able to take it. We'll hit it with a flame charge to try and lower its HP a little bit. Okay, we almost killed it. I got scared there, but we didn't. Now we need to catch it. And I think I want to use a Premier Ball for our first Pokemon. Let's see if we catch him. Our first new team member. One, two, three. Oh, and he popped out. All right, so that's okay. We have another chance. We'll throw another Pokeball at him. Aha, there we go. Now welcome our newest team member, Pichu. And I believe Pichu, yes, he is one of the Pokemon that you can put on your shoulder. And so now we've got this little adorable guy sitting here on our shoulder. After you've gotten Pokeballs and a two basic items that you really need to build to get yourself started off right in the Cobblemon world. And so you want the healing machine, which will allow you to heal your Pokemon. So now Torchic can get back to full health. And then the next one that you're gonna wanna build is the PC. So the healing machine just takes two copper and then five iron ingots. And then we want a PC, but for that we're gonna need two copper, four iron ingots, one piece of glass, and then two smooth stones. So I went and I got the materials, and now we can build ourselves a PC. And we'll add these two items just right here. Once we build a house, we'll make this all look a lot prettier, but I'm just gonna add these all in a line to make it so you can see all the things you're gonna want on your first day. Now the healing machine, we can, it'll take just a second to charge right after you build it. That allows you to heal your Pokemon, and so we can get rid of the paralysis on Torchic and heal Pichu's health. And then the PC, you can hold any Pokemon in here that you don't want with you, and then after you have six Pokemon in your party, any Pokemon that you catch will go straight to the PC. All right, so I think it should be charged up enough now. There we go, and now our Pokemon are healed. And so now what I wanna do for the rest of the video, I wanna try and catch some more Pokemon, and then train up these guys a little bit so we have a bit of a better start in the world here. But also there's something I saw over here in the corner while I was waiting for the healing machine to be charged that I wanna show you guys because it's something really important. I don't know if you can see that there, but that right there is an elemental stone. These will spawn in the world and they're very valuable, especially for when we're gonna be trying to get the legendary Pokemon later. And I think there might be a fire stone over there as well. So I'm gonna go in and get these down. You guys aren't gonna believe this, but I just found one of the strongest Pokemon. The man, the myth, the legend himself, Bidoof. Sorry, had to do it for the memes right there. But the Safari Ball worked and we caught ourselves a Bidoof. And I think I might keep him on the team for a little bit just for the memes, because Bidoof is just a fun looking Pokemon. All right, so we got ourselves over here and boom, there we go. We got a Thunderstone. Now that's gonna be really, really important later on. So Thunderstones allow certain Pokemon to evolve, which is awesome, but it also is necessary for us to catch Zapdos later on. And so I'm gonna be keeping an eye out for these and trying to get as many as I can. Uh, as I build over to that, what I think is a Firestone over there, I wanted to say something that I forgot to tell you guys earlier. I'm gonna put the World Seed that I'm playing on down in the description. If any of you want to play along, the World Seed will be in the description and feel free to use that and play with me and you'll be able to see where certain things are. All right. Ooh, it's actually a Sunstone. Now that is actually better than a Firestone, in my opinion right now. A Firestone is used to evolve certain Pokemon as well as a Sunstone, but Sunstone is what we need for Moltres. And so we'll see if there's any other ones nearby. I don't see any, but we're gonna keep our eyes out for those throughout the series because we need a couple of those to get each of the legendary Pokemon that we're going for. But now I think for the rest of the episode, we're gonna try and get our friend Torchic here to evolve catch a few more Pokemon, and then we'll probably be done for the day. Ooh, I just stumbled across a Vavillion, which if you remember, one of our goals is to get every single form of Vavillion. So we're gonna try and catch this guy. I'll start off by just throwing a Safari Ball, see if that works, and if not, we'll go into battle with him. So it looks like it didn't work. We'll battle him. Torchic is pretty outfitted to go against one of these. We'll just have to make sure we don't knock him out. 
He put us to sleep, which is a little bit obnoxious, but hopefully we'll wake up here in a second. And let's actually look, the sleeping animations for some of the Pokemon are cute, but apparently they don't work in battle. So that's good to know. We'll see, I'll show you that later on. Sometimes at night, Pokemon will fall asleep and you can walk up on them like that and it's pretty fun. Okay, it looks like it did a lot, but it doesn't knock him out, but I'm worried about in case it's a crit, I don't want to knock him out. So let's go for an Ember and I think we can safely do one more. Okay, awesome. Now we're gonna go in and try and catch it. All right, there we go. We have one form of Pavilion and he looks pretty sweet if I do say so myself. Let's have him face us here. Good looking Pokemon right there. All right, but now we need to get Torchic to level 16. We got a Pidgey flying here. We'll try and catch him. And we'll just kind of throw that as we're running around. We're gonna look for another Pokemon that we can fight here. Fletchling's a cool Pokemon. I think we'll try and catch him as well. We caught Pidgey, which is awesome. Fletchling came out. We'll throw one more Safari Ball. It's our last one. Let's see if we can catch him as we head off to bed here. And we did. All right, look at that team we have right here. A lot of bird Pokemon. We're probably gonna switch this up before long and not have this as our full team, but I like catching Pokemon as we go. Ooh, and I just saw an Elekid pop up, which is one of my favorite Pokemon. So we're gonna try and go catch ourselves an Elekid in the morning. Here is the Elekid, he's a level 12, which is good because that means we can probably catch him. It's been nice, we've run into a lot of low level Pokemon recently. Sometimes in Kalamon you can run into a lot of high level ones. I'm a little nervous to use Flame Charge again, so we'll go for Ember, which good thing I did, that did a lot of damage. Now we're gonna try and catch Elekid here. Uh, just a pro tip there, if you run out of Pokeballs in the middle of a battle, you can go to your inventory. If you have some here, you can just move them in and out like that, which is super helpful. There we go. All right, we caught ourselves an Elekid, and I'll show you how the PC works really quick because I do want Elekid with me because I think he's a cool Pokemon. Uh, we'll trade out Talo here. Yeah, we'll trade out Talo. And now we have Elekid on our team. All right, welcome back. I knocked out a few Pokemon, and now our Torchic is ready to evolve. So to evolve Pokemon, you'll press the M key, and then you'll go right here, and the Evolve button will be there if it's possible. We're going to click Evolve to Combuskin, and there we go. We got ourselves a Combuskin. Now, periodically, you're going to want to change their moves because they don't automatically update. So as you saw, it just said that he could learn... Uh, double kick, but it also can learn flamethrower, which is a much better move than flame charge So we're gonna do that and we're gonna see if there's any other moves we want here Probably not. So we'll we'll stick with this for now. Actually, we'll get rid of pet scratch For peck. All right, that was a lot more than I planned to do for this episode But thank you guys so much for watching I hope you really enjoyed and please subscribe to this channel so you can check out the future episodes